Your anatomy is a blueprint. You are an architect. Beneath your skin lie the plans for your fastest, strongest, most powerful self. If you can learn the structure of your skeleton, the makeup of your muscle, and the mechanics of movement, you can create your best possible body. I'm Mike Robertson. This is Built by Science. When young guys first get in the gym, what's that first muscle group they think of and want to hit? You got it, it's their chest. It's not uncommon to see a young guy get in the gym and hit it 20, 30, 40 sets of bench press in one workout. And that's just one workout. That's not over three, four, five days a week that they're in the gym. The bad news is if you're hitting 20, 30, 40 sets of bench press every single day, you're either gonna end up with a shoulder injury or at the very least, bad posture. So as we go through this video, I wanna teach you guys not only how to be more efficient and effective in your training, but taking that to the next level with some smart, targeted pec and chest training. In this video, we're gonna cover the muscles. We're gonna cover the bones and the joints. We're gonna cover all the individual movements that those bones and joints create. And we're gonna throw in a few key exercises so that you guys know the exact moves and techniques we want you to use to get the most out of your pec and chest training. With that being said, we've got IFBB Physique Pro Craig Caperso in the house. The guy's got an amazing physique, he's shredded. He's gonna help all of us better understand how to target and really hit our chest muscles. Let's go ahead and jump right into the anatomy. When we're talking about your chest, we're gonna focus on three muscle groups here today. The first one, and the one you're probably most interested in, is your pec major, and that's your big chest muscle. Now, within your pec, there's actually three subsections. You've got your clavicular head, and that runs from your clavicle, comes down and across, and attaches onto your humerus, or your upper arm bone. Second, you have your sternal head, and that runs from your sternum, all the way comes across, and also inserts into your humerus, or your upper arm bone. There are certain anatomists that will also tell you there's a third head and it's called the abdominal portion of your pec. And it actually runs from your rectus sheath, which is a big part of connective tissue and comes up and across and it also attaches onto the humerus. So while there's three unique subsections to your pecs, these are a major player. And most times, a lot of guys are really gonna struggle with this top portion, this clavicular head. So we're gonna make sure we throw a few key exercises into the workout to make sure you're really dialing it in and hitting this area. So we've got pec major. The second muscle group we're gonna focus on is called pec minor. And this is a really small muscle group. You're probably not gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time in the gym trying to develop it, but it actually runs from a little bony prominence on the top of your scapula called your coracoid process. It comes down and it attaches to ribs three, four, and five on your rib cage. So again, I want you to know that it's there, but you're probably not gonna spend a lot of time trying to develop it. It's mostly there for improving your breathing and your respiration. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about your serratus anterior. And this is a muscle you may not spend a lot of time developing in the gym, but it's absolutely critical, not only for a nice balanced physique, but for developing good, healthy shoulders as well. So with your serratus anterior, it actually starts on the inside of your shoulder blade, wraps around and attaches or connects onto the front of your rib cage. So as you guys can imagine, if you've seen really lean bodybuilders like Craig, they've got that great looking serratus. We're gonna make sure we show you how to develop that muscle as well because it's really critical, not only for physique, but for performance as well. Now that we've covered the muscles, let's take a look at the bones and joints involved in creating movement through your chest. We're gonna start with the back side of Craig's body. So he's gonna turn around here. And if you can imagine, you've got your shoulder blade or your scapula. Now this is really important. When you're setting up on an exercise like a bench press, you wanna pin those shoulder blades down and back. So that's really important. It's gonna give you a stable base to press from. So your scapula is actually really important, especially when you're doing big compound exercises. You got your scapula and then you have your humerus. And those two joints or those two bones come together to form your glenohumeral joint. This again, this is very important. If you don't have a good setup for your chest pressing exercises, you're leaving your shoulders exposed to injury. 
Last but not least, I'm gonna have Craig just give me a quarter turn here. You can't talk about chest without talking about the elbow. Now, a lot of people don't think about this, but every time you're doing a pressing exercise, you're going to extend your elbow. So you can't just talk about chest without thinking about shoulders, without thinking about triceps, without thinking about all of the joints involved in those movements. Now that we've covered the muscles, the bones, and joints involved in your chest training, let's start to put all those pieces together to see how it looks in real world functional movement that you're gonna use every day in the gym. We're gonna start off by looking at your pecs and specifically your pec major. As you recall, you've got three different sections here. You've got your clavicular head, you've got your sternal head, and you've got your abdominal head. So all of those will work together to create what's called internal rotation of your shoulder. So if Craig's got his hand up here and he turns his arm downwards or forwards, that's called internal rotation. A lot of times people aren't too focused on that. If they're talking about chest, they wanna know how do I get those striations? How do I look big and lean like this? One of the best exercises is a horizontal fly or an incline fly. In that exercise, you're creating what's called horizontal adduction. So you're pulling across your body. And as you guys can imagine, just think about those pec fibers. They start here, and as he pulls across, think about how they're shortening up and getting tight. So all those muscles work together to create what's called horizontal adduction. Now this next piece is important. Go ahead and relax, boss. The next piece is your clavicular head. And when you think about the clavicular head, it comes down and across right here. So it's responsible for shoulder flexion, like you would when you raise your arm up overhead. So if you can imagine, Craig, give us an incline bench. You guys know how you're kind of at an incline, you got your arms raised up overhead. This is why you're gonna hit the top portion of that chest or that clavicular head when you're bench pressing. Now, on the opposite hand, you've got that sternal portion of your pec as well, or that lower portion. You're gonna hit this the most when you're doing like a decline bench or even a pullover. Craig and I were just talking about this yesterday. When you guys really cinch over at the top of a pullover type exercise, that's where you're really hitting that sternal head of your pec. So as you guys can imagine, the torso position, the position of your shoulders, all those things are gonna make a difference in what portion of your pec you're actually training when you're in the gym. So we've covered the pecs. Now one other muscle group I wanna focus on is the serratus anterior. So if you can go ahead and give me a profile. You guys will remember, serratus anterior runs from the inside of your shoulder blade and it wraps around onto your rib cage. So this is gonna be most noticeable when you're doing something that does what's called protraction of your shoulder. So if Craig really reaches long, not only we see this when somebody's reaching long out in like the start of a row, but you'll also see this as they finish at the top of a push-up. So even though you may not think of a push-up as a great chest exercise, it may not just hit your chest, but also your serratus anterior as well. One final function, when you're talking about serratus, go ahead and reach up overhead for me. Your serratus anterior is one of three muscles that allows your shoulder blade to rotate or create upward rotation. So serratus anterior, your lower traps, and your upper traps work together to create that upward rotation to allow you to get your shoulder overhead safely and effectively. So that's something I want you to know. When you're walking away from this, serratus anterior, it's not just great if you've got a built physique like Craig, but it's critically important if you want to keep your shoulders healthy as well. Now that we've covered the muscles, the joints, and the function of your chest, we're gonna put it all together and demonstrate a few key exercises that you guys are gonna to wanna to use when you get into the gym. Now, one thing I wanna make note of, Craig's a rock star, he's gonna make this look really easy and the weights aren't super heavy. Just because we're not going super heavy on film doesn't mean we don't want you guys to go heavy and push yourselves when you're in the gym. So with that being said, the first exercise we're gonna demonstrate is a dumbbell incline bench press. Few technique points as far as setting up, make sure your abs are nice and tight. Whenever possible, keep your feet on the ground. If you keep your abs and your legs tight, you're gonna be able to move more weight. From this position, he's locked in and he's just gonna press the dumbbells overhead. Now, one thing I always like to cue my clients to do is to tuck the elbows slightly when they come down. If your elbows are really flared out to the side, it puts a lot more stress and torque on your shoulders. So think about tucking the elbows slightly on the way down, full range of motion, and then finish strong at the top. When you're doing an incline bench, you're really using all three heads of your pecs. You're using the clavicular head, you're using the sternal head, you're using the abdominal head. 
But when you go on an incline or when you start to flex those shoulders, that's when you're really gonna bring out and attack the clavicular head of your pet. So if you're having problems filling in the top portion of that chest, make sure you get some incline benching or some incline flies into your program. One final point, when you incline bench, if you have any kind of shoulder issue or this causes any discomfort, move to a neutral grip where your hands are facing each other and then try it again. This is gonna give you just a little bit of breathing room for your rotator cuff to move and operate and chances are it's gonna feel a heck of a lot better. The next exercise we're gonna demonstrate is a dumbbell fly. And this exercise is really gonna hit the pecs as far as that horizontal adduction component of the movement goes. So Craig's gonna go ahead and lay on his back here, set himself up, good stable base, abs tight, legs tight. And then from this position, he's just gonna keep soft elbows, get a nice stretch through his pecs. And as you guys can imagine, you can just see those pecs kind of opening up and lengthening. And then from this position, he's gonna pull it back together and shorten it back up. So it looks like a very simple exercise. The man's got great technique and it's really gonna help build balanced pec development. It's gonna hit the clavicular pec, the sternal head, and even the abdominal head of those pecs pretty evenly. The last exercise we're gonna demonstrate is a push-up. Now I know what you're thinking, you've probably been doing push-ups for years, but I wanna give you guys a few subtle cues and a few subtle tricks that I think are gonna make your push-ups even more effective. So I'm gonna have Craig go ahead and set up here. And when you guys are doing a push-up, the nice thing about this, it's a total body lift really connects your upper and lower body. So I want you to make sure your abs are nice and tight. And from this position, Craig's gonna tuck the elbows slightly, lower himself down to the ground. And then the key, if you really wanna hit that serratus, is to finish strong. Exaggerate trying to push your body as far away from the floor as possible at the top. When you do that, that's when you're gonna really engage your serratus. So think about abs tight, tuck the elbows, control all the way down, and then at the top, finish strong, exaggerate and really try and squeeze that serrated. After watching this video, you essentially have a PhD in chest muscle building. So you've got no excuse. You can't simply go back and do what you've always done, which is probably mindless sets of flat barbell bench pressing. I get it, it's a great exercise and it's gonna help you build some muscle. But after you watch this video, you should have a really strong understanding of how all the bones, the joints, the muscles work together, about how changing something as simple as your shoulder position is gonna help you target and hit specific areas of your chest. Don't be afraid to mix it up. Use barbells, use dumbbells, press, do flies. The more you guys mix it up and the more you guys understand the actual anatomy and the function behind this stuff, the better your physique is gonna look. Make sure you watch all the videos because we cover every single muscle group in this amount of depth and detail. Let the gym be your lab. Try new things, research new methods, because there's no better way to learn and understand how your body works than to try new things on yourself. With that being said, I'm Mike Robertson. This is Built by Science. Mind, muscle, masterpiece. Learn muscular anatomy, biomechanics, mechanics, the skeletal system, muscle function, and the best exercises to build lean mass. Knowledge, Knowledge is power. power. Know yourself to build yourself. Build yourself with the best. Mind, muscle, masterpiece.